Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Open Mic Night, live at the Zoom Bar DC. It's going to be a great night. We've got Bill Sherman, Reggie Stout, Artemis, um, Scott Kaplowitz, Ed Crowley, and, and more. So sit back, relax, and have a good time. And Bill Sherman's going to kick us off. So take it away, Bill. Thank you, Marie Louise. Let's see here now. So um, last week, um, for whatever reason, um, I found on YouTube, and I'd never seen the whole thing. I'd only seen a song or two from it, the whole rooftop concert by the Beatles in 1969, not realizing that the deal was is that the, uh, the Bobbies, the uh, police, uh, you know, were working all throughout the, the uh, concert to uh, put an end to it because it was disrupting uh, street life. Um, and uh, I, I really got turned on by a couple of the songs in it. Uh, so uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to figure them out and share them with you. Uh, let's see, I'll start with that one. got a feeling, a feeling deep inside, oh yeah, oh yeah, I got a feeling, a feeling I can't hide, oh no, oh no, oh no. Please believe me, I'd hate to miss that train. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And if you leave me, I won't be late again. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. I've been wandering around, wondering where you've been, told me all that I was looking for was someone like you. I've got a feeling that keeps me on my toes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got a feeling, I think that everybody knows, oh yeah, oh yeah, well, everybody had a hard year, everybody had a good time, everybody had a wet dream, everybody saw the sunshine, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Everybody had a good year. Everybody let their hair down. Everybody pulled the socks up, yeah, and everybody put the foot down. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Said I got a feeling, a feeling deep inside. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got a feeling, a feeling I can't hide. Oh no, oh no, oh no.
Thank you. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. Go, Bill. Uh, and the other song, uh, song I've always right? liked is, uh, I'm sorry, say it again. It's John Lennon's song, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so is this one as well. Um, uh, it's a little bit older. Well, actually, it's not a little older. It just sounds older, but it was on the Let It Be album. Set you riding on the one after 909. I'll sit and move over, honey. I'm traveling on that line. I'll sit and move over once, move over twice. Say, oh, come on, honey, don't be cold as ice. I said you're traveling on the one after 909. Please don't leave me, I beg her on my bended knees. You're only fooling around, you're only fooling around me. I said move over once, move over twice. Come on, baby, don't be cold as ice. I said we're traveling on the one after nine or nine, yeah. Well, I went, I packed up my bags and went to the station. The real man said, I got the wrong location. I picked up my bags and run right home. But then I find I got the number wrong. Yeah, I said we travel on one after nine or nine. I said we move over home and traveling on that line. I said, move over once, move over twice. Well, come on, baby, don't be cold as ice. I said, we're traveling on the one after nine or nine. Yeah! up my bags and went to the station the real man said I got the wrong location well I picked up my bags and I, I run right home well, then I find yeah I got the number wrong but came on baby we're traveling on the one after 909 yeah I said, move over, baby, I'm traveling on that line. I said, move over once, move over twice. Well, come on, baby, don't be cold as ice. I said, we're traveling on the one after nine. I said, we're traveling on the one after nine. I said, we're traveling on the one after nine or nine. Yeah, I, I came in late. That 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 was originally uh, Lennon McCartney song, or is that by yeah, some? Yes, yes. Uh, was that written pretty early in their collaboration? Yeah, yeah. So no, that's the deal. It sounds like it was written pretty early, right. but I believe that it was written for the Let It Be album. But I could be wrong. Well, I'll okay. have to do some research on that. I I thought it was written in in their early pre beatle days. Well, see, I, I, obviously I, I, I could easily be wrong. It wouldn't so be good. uncommon. So, so I'll have to look it up. Positive though, it was either written before or after they became famous. So, well, Paul McCartney wrote place. "When When I'm 64" when he was about 15 or 16. There you go. <laughs> before it be, when it did seem like it was a long ways away. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Um, Artemis, do you want to go next? Sure. You know, I'll, I'll go. Dang it. Uh, I was going to do a song, but uh, homeboy brought up freestone various words, so I guess I'll go with that first. Uh, let's see. All right. If you haven't done this before, uh, put random words in the chat, and I'll just freestyle. 
tell about it as I go. I need to use it. I need to use a different beat for this. Every time I do this, I use the same beat. I don't know why. No, it's not that. It. It's not that. It. Nope. Oh, here you go. All right. I might as well practice a little bit. Okay. Ah. Uh, in Espanol, I don't know that, so I won't say Stormy without saying Daniels. Ah, a nice scandal, yeah. I think I'm too loud. I might have said that style too proud is what I want to say about mine. Uh, I don't play your tambourine when I have to rhyme. Uh, you watch I stand up with Chris Crock. Chris Rock, he said that I don't think I'm going to get to the top of my band, though. I should play basketball again, but I don't have the handle. So on house arrest, I'm not going to be on because I'm not trying to be in the system with peons beyond that. They can't really say he beyond that. I don't say I'd be on crack one. I'm just going off the top. This addiction is all on my veins, and I have no affliction. Hurricane, I don't slur it, man. When you see it coming to you, and it's going to leave you blurry, man. Insane hoops in a bubble. That doesn't make any sense. So I guess I'm in trouble with that word backwards. I got it. The Constitution, a free speech, it's not a resolution. For you to do what you want to do, you might get beat down. Don't try to say it's that when you want to cheat now. A jazz storm, if you combine that it doesn't make sense in a rhyme rap a jazz storm that means it's like thunder rim with a lot of improvisation i got it with the sensation ping pong back and forth with the tom hanks playing forward scump over the hump i'm trying to go like will chamberlain when i'm banging then a couple of girls that want to hang again uh, got the poetry down they was like do you slam with it now nah, i don't do that style a freestyle poetry was cool i used to slam it t is and back then, but I didn't see the whole wisdom. I try to get on the slam team. The damn scene didn't quote Shakespeare. I made clear that I don't know his plays, though. They were kind of nice back then, and you would read them back at the table in English class. You've seen it's fast to go then. More than folks were asking when you try to put it all in a nice kind of drive with the luxury. It made no sense. A Beatle, are you bugging me with them? I don't even know about the Beatles or a Beatle. Oh, you mean that kind of thing due to drive? Oh, I kind of messed it up when I said that it's a vibe along with the library. I not feeling like I'm kind of keep keeping it cool, see, but I need to watch a movie with George Clooney so I could just say that's kind of nice. Uh, Marjorie is kind of loony and she's not that nice either. I messed that up again. I'm saying it's eat. The, I preached to a little bit of these crowds, though. I know it just kind of sounds kind of slow when I'm trying to kiss kick again. I know I took a nap when I was ripping then. Then I don't want to say give it on up. I'm not going to do it, but I might be stuck. I'm charting, of course, right then. I rhymes with the word like sharding. You don't want to do that. Uh, star me, the shoe game veteran. Better than you with your flip flops. Backwards more than crisscross tequila. I have to drink it right there. Senior readers think I'm Ice Cube when they see me, but I'm not that guy though. We're trying to rhyme flow, kind of fly though. I go in a psycho, psycho. Oh, that was a little choppy. Uh, la, la, la. You gotta love it. That was pretty cool. It. That was cool. I didn't know that uh, yeah. a Beatle is a voice. <laughs> no, so, so is that, is it, improving in relation to what is that? Is that a form that's already part of rap and hip hop culture? Or is that something you're developing right here? Well, no, it's it's some it's part of it. Like I've always done. But done in response to uh, actual improv, because I I I've covered comedy and there's a stand up. A guy named Paul Provenza developed a form of stand up as opposed to improv where people would throw out a sentence and they would have to construct an entire bit on, and you're doing something really impressive. So congratulations. Oh, this is, oh, this, is this is like traditional too. Like we, That's part like tradition. Black, black shows, well, these guys, yeah, think about a lot of shows too. Like a couple of friends of mine, we, we would do things like object freestyles or we would do, or if we did like, I like these little like kind of meetings and uh, group uh, things or whatever. We go through the alphabet. We go through. Um, we like develop stories like you're talking about. Like, it, yeah, this is. I like doing this. Cause it's different because I've never done this during a, over Zoom like this, and it's right. kind of fun. Like to have people. 
Just throwing it out. Like, I didn't even think about it. Like I knew like, about like, freestyle. Like, I just didn't know it was in response to random words thrown out by audience members. I love it. I think it's so cool. Thank uh, you so much. I mean, yeah, like, that's a lot. That's a lot. Well, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, like when, there. like, like in person, it shows. People done it all the time. Oh, the I, just, I just noticed the hat that you incorporated in. Appreciate that a lot. Uh, thank, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Supporting black yeah. business, man. You know. Uh, um, I guess one more. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on a second. Nope. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to find that song. Sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, I just can't find the song. I completely empathize with that. There's a lot of times I can't find the song in my brain. Yeah. Just give me one more minute. Because I, I just had this song in here. Here, quick, uh, a, a, a quick piece of information while, while uh, I hear you. Oh, here looking I for. Okay, it, it. never mind. I'll be quiet. I got it. I got it. I don't know why I've missed over it. All right. Mm -hmm. I've done this before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Ah. Away from my sins. It's the weight of my sins. Keep away from my friends. It's that way to the end. I, I know someday I'll flow in space. With all that anger, still show my face. The universe, it knows I tried. With all that failure, hey, I still survive. It's the weight of my sins. It's the weight of my sins. Keep my way from my friends. It's that way to the end. My friends, they put me in a fury. Double tasking as the judge and the jury. So I told him, like, I get so nervous, but we know deep down beneath the surface, you have some things that you would like to hide that you do on purpose. So I said something like, Break that finger next time you want to point it in. Cry to your counselor at your next appointment. Go ahead and trap your gang, 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 and you know what happens. Same train, gang, ah. It's the weight of my sins. It's the weight of my sins. It's that way to the end. Keep away from my friends. She was funny and afraid, scoping for the money on a tape. I guess I'm not the scared type. A temporary like with permanent love, concerning the love, through dirt on my name to a turn in the mud. Uh, but she liked them bougie brothers. Looking like you got dressed by some other but uh, anyways, what would you say that I accept it more? I love your flaws, the less is more. A she devil that can grow some wings, and then you push me back because I know some things, huh? That's the weight of my sins. That's the weight of her sins. Keep away from our friends. All right, I'm cool. I haven't done that song in a while. All right. Okay. Hey, Thank you. That was awesome. Cool. That's a great song. I love that song. Good stuff. Um, what's the name of that one? It's called The Weight of My Sense. It was on my Astro Blocks album that came out last year. Weight of My Sense. Awesome. Right. Okay. Uh, 
Let's see. Scott, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, I have a couple of originals this week because I realized I hadn't done originals in a while. I have a fast original and a slow original. Should I do the fast one first or the slow one first? Slow one. Either one, whatever you want. Up to you. All right, slow one first. Okay, um, I think I've played both of these before. Um, first one is called Canon, as in like storyline canon, not like boom in the Civil War canon. <laughs> storyline canon. Um, let's do a sound check on this piano. Y'all hear that? Okay, cool. Nice, Scott. Yeah. Thank you. Like Thanks, Scott. Yeah. All 
All right. Um, the other song, I realized that I actually did have a song that had a vague train metaphor in it that I could have played last last week. So I'm playing that song this week. Um, this song is called Fine White Line. Um, the fine white line is a metaphor for something that's not a train. <clears throat> One second, sorry. <clears throat> Switch this piano real quick. Y'all still hear this? Should just be a little brighter, the tone. Cool. Met in a class this club on a Friday night. We satisfied each other's appetites. We were 21, all full of wild plans. I took you every Looked you in the eyes and took you by the hand. Said, I've got something good for you to see. And I brought you on the fine white line with me. That turned to April evening, seeing the park and spark. We ran away to light up the dark. But we could run down now, so we could sit in the street. Bamboo run was still beneath our feet, living with our future soon to find. We jumped together over that fine white line. And oh, I know that I am foolish, but I never thought that you could be too. But you bought a ticket for this runaway train to try to bid to skip your feet. Now I'm riding on this fine white line with you. The summer came and off you went with your pockets stuffed with next month's rent. I was half asleep, stuck in a fever dream. You were halfway gone, someone in the dream. Stranded on a ledge made of time. Stranded in that fine white line. And oh, I know that I was foolish, but I never thought that you could be too. But you left me stranded on a runaway train to try to bend to escape your pain. And I can't ride this fine white line without you. It was short and the transistors on our brainwave radios. But when we get caught in a blizzard, Left me out in the cold, and the never end in winter, snow on snow on snow. You hopped a train to the green of pastures, and I never saw you go. And oh, I know now that I am foolish, and I should have known that you could be too. Cause you left me stranded on a runaway train I can try to live, but there's no escape So I'll ride it on this fine white line without you Oh, I'll ride it on this fine white line without you Oh, I'll ride it on this fine white line without you Nice song, Scott. Right. Yeah. Kind of a Ben Folds thing. Yes, yeah. Is that, is that nicely guessing? done, but it had train. It had it's trains in it. So it's cool. Yeah. Hey, hey, Scott. Yeah. The only thing prettier than the view is hearing you sing. Oh. 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 Um, All right. I got. What the metaphor is what the fine white line is. No. Okay. I'm an idiot. It is cocaine. <laughs> That's Bad. usually what they I, mean by a fine white line. It is cocaine, yeah. which I My have food's no here. personal experience run. with myself. But it makes a nice song too. Bye, you, buddy. You, this I isn't probably, related to your personal experience, just as a metaphor? It's it's just a story. I've, I've never been one to buy into that every song you write has to come from personal experience. Because like, if you're a fiction writer, 
if you're like George R. R. Martin writing Game of Thrones, you obviously don't have experience going with political machinations to use dragons to destroy your enemies. Why do no. I have to write everything? <laughs> Ran Randy Newman embodies that in his songwriting. Well, good where almost nothing is based on him personally. But I always do take it as a compliment when people ask me which part of my life a song was based on, because it means that it feels real, which That's is important. Good. All right, thanks, y'all. That's good. Thanks, Scott. That was awesome. Okay, Tom Mann, you want to tell us a story? Yeah. I do, and I doubt you're going to believe me. <clears throat> I don't believe it. Trouble with being a storyteller is that people think you're always telling stories and they tend to take them with a grain of salt or yeah, he's kissed the Blarney stone again. What I'm about to tell you is true. I'm not gonna embellish or exaggerate anything. Um, I went to a, we've all been shut indoors for a long time. And my wife's been dead for three years and I've, I've got footprints and claw marks up the walls and they're starting to go across the ceiling now. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try a dating site. And I did. And since June 1st, 500 women within five miles of here have said they want sex tonight, if possible, and sent pictures that would make Hustler Magazine blush. I don't know what to make of it. I'm I'm stunned. I'm shocked. And I know you're probably saying, "Yeah, yeah, right." Too bad for you, Tom. It's this. It's like a tsunami of lust. It's just washed over <laughs> my life. And uh, so I don't know. I don't know what to do because I don't really. Uh, I didn't date much in school. In fact, the worst experience I had was I got turned down seven times for a school formal. And the seventh girl that turned me down called back a minute later and said her mother said she had to go with me. So <laughs> under due rest. So that was my dating experience. That's a long story, but within the few months of getting out of college, I was in Vietnam as a civilian. And if you ever saw um, Stanley Kubrick's film, Full Metal Jacket, maybe <sighs> familiar with a scene where the Vietnamese streetwalkers come up to the GIs and say, me love you a long time, Joe. And it was such a different meaning from I was used to back in the Midwest. Because In the Midwest, if you're going to make love for a long time, it's until death do you part. <laughs> uh, over there, under the pressure of war, a long time was four hours, a short time was two hours. Uh -huh. And uh, came back to the States and had the last first date I've had in over 50 years with a woman who became my wife. And we had a monogamous marriage for 45 years. And um, wow. so to find 500 women, literally 99% uh, well, of them offering sex on the spot, I, I really don't know what to make of the strangest proposal was uh, to be on call for when she starts to ovulate so I could come over and impregnate her with, with her with her husband helping out. Oh, God. Oh, it's a fetish thing. I re that's, that's it. This is sadness. You may think this is every boy's wildest dream. Uh, yeah, not mine. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and uh, the uh, yeah, I mean, I rem I don't remember anybody helping me when <laughs> that my wife that she was there. But... They write books about that. <laughs> and then she said, uh, "You don't. You can have as much or a little interest in the child's life, or none at all." Jesus. So. I did a quick calculation based on my age now. I would have a teenage child in my mid 90s. And of all the thrills that life has to offer, that ain't one of them. Um, <laughs> a number of women 
in the hotel trade say that there are always empty rooms every night. <laughs> Come by and we'll find one. And um, a lot of them are for affairs with married women. Which is this that Christian site? Is that the one? Ah! That one? <laughs> but but uh, no, but um, yeah, I've gotten off my line of thought here. I'm sorry. The, uh, <laughs> what I'm thinking of doing is getting a grant from the National Science Museum to do this in various metropolitan areas around the country and see if the if the libido is that strong everywhere is it just here in the desert is it just a reflection of of, of the uh being indoors for a year i mean oh the other thing is it's free to meet people and it's free to get responses but it's a dollar and a half to reply right and even the ladies who send a picture of a spread of food and their bed saying come over tonight the door is open have dinner and we'll get together i'm in my lingerie already jesus and i feel like at least a few of them have to be bots but i don't doubt that some of them are real people well even the ones that say come over tonight start playing 20 questions what what's come over but first what's your favorite music do you like ska What's your favorite color? And it gets into 20 questions at a dollar and a half a question. Oh, sounds like a trap. I'm just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm beginning to think that they're all avatars and that the art of photorealism has gotten so good that you can draw an image that passes for a photograph. Or you can just steal something. Impersonate some strange uh, online. I don't think that's the case, but anyway, I'm I'm going to write this up because there's there's please so do much, it's fascinating. There's so much too. I'm thinking, in fact, of doing an avatar myself as a woman looking for a man, because apparently <laughs> most of the men, but most of the men on here must be 22 and horny as hell. Because <laughs> a number of 18 and 19 year old girls have said they're tired of young guys. <laughs> And they want to get some experience from a mature man. <laughs> and I say, that's the only time I've ever been referred to as mature. <laughs> anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. None of that is exaggerated. It's a, it's a good story. I, I, I am curious. This sounds, uh, I hate to ask a journalistic uh, off the record question is was this adult friend finder or a normal dating site like Match? I'm just curious what kind of website. You got these responses from well it clearly wasn't what i thought i thought i was going to get five or six responses from women in their 60s and 70s who would like to meet for wine or coffee and maybe have a relationship uh it wasn't I mean, it sounds it wasn't like one of the yeah, major dates um, it sounds like not, uh, they it don't sounds don't like, like you're on some kind of pseudo scam porn site basically like adult friend finder or it could be somebody trying to peddle you like rewards points. Like by the time you can see your favorite color, they'll ask if you like Walmart and if you like, and if you like to get free coffee and like, if you like to buy a bunch of stuff, like then that's, you know that's, it's, that's possible. But the yeah, putting in that I like sky music is probably going to skew the. That's very yeah. That's very weird. Then they're going to like send you like a real big fish tape, and you're like, I don't even listen to this. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, 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 Arthur, I have I have a question, Arthur. Yeah, me? Yeah. Yeah. How do you know about the, I've never even heard of this adult friend find. Uh, uh, How do you know about this adult friend finder site, he, man? He's a journalist. I, he's a I journalist. heard of it and I sit in some browsing, okay? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. A journalist. Uh, you know, I was just trying I'm to an ever that. curious journalist. A I, curious I, journalist, okay. I also follow lots of subcultures in lots of different areas. So don't take me serious. I was just being it, uh <laughs> As the Church of Bob once said, you don't want to know all the things that I know. So I know a lot from exploring different subcultures. So, you, but I'm not John Waters, who's the master of bizarre <laughs> subcultures. When, when you said the Church of Bob, I, I'm very good friends with the woman who said that she she will never date, that she's happy enough with Bob. You know what that means? 
I said, well, who's Bob? And she said, had a reoperated boyfriend. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. The Church of Bob. There you go. That's a whole new. It was one. also known. Yeah, it was known as the Church of the Subgenius, a very funny parody that grew up in the subculture that was a parody of cult groups. I don't want to take any more time. But that's monster. That's a true story. story. We, I, I, I thank you, Tom. That was really a great story. I, I'm still getting about six an hour. So wow. I may bounce out in and out. Okay. Someone's got a radio or TV on in their background. Yeah, someone it's the whole package. Someone has a TV and radio. Please please mute yourself. I just muted Judy. It might have been Judy. Um just to, if I may say, I, I hope no one takes this in bad taste, because that's not how I mean it. It's 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 just overwhelming, breathtaking, and really stunning that there's that much infidelity going on. And my advice to husbands is pay attention to your wife. All the women wanting a lover are because the guy they're with, the husband they're with, pays no attention to them. I, I was guilty of that myself, and boy, does that come home. Well, I, I, I think I, I, we're going to, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Art. Um, we're going to move on. And okay. um, Ed, do you want to go next? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. How's everybody doing? Nice to see good. everybody. Nice How are to you? See everybody. Yeah, man, good. Yeah. I'm good. Um, I'm going to start with a uh, uh, John Nemeth tune. Uh, I'm trying to remember how it starts. Sooner or later you learn Play with fire, you get Play with fire, you get burned. Sooner or later you learn. Every fool gonna get their turn. You live your life all the while. Living rope above the fire. Your candlelight burns bright. Someday it won't. with fire you get 
did this last week but I but um, I, I learned it better I learned it a little bit better so I'll try to give it a, try, a better try this time this is a Billy Price tune someday soon it will all be It's getting near. It's gonna be a reckoning. There's gonna be a reckoning. Can't go wrong with the things you do. It's all wrong, and you know it's true. There's gonna be a reckoning. Yeah, there's gonna. I swear there's enough for everyone You can laugh And have your fun It's a gas Until it comes undone It's gonna be a reckoning Yeah, there's gonna be a reckoning There's gonna be a reckoning Yeah, there's gonna be a reckoning Is that original or a cover? Uh, that's uh, originally written by a guy named Billy T. William Tioni, I think his name is. But uh, Billy well, Price, co Billy Price, covered it on his Reckoning album. Oh, it was very good. So, so, can I ask it for any of the performance here? If you're performing anywhere in any in the next week or so, including this weekend, some things are opening up. Please post them here so we could see you in person. Thanks, Art. Um, that was really tight. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, yeah. Was that two already? He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were memorable. They were just... <laughs> no, he's in back because they were so good. It's been a long day, man. It's been a very long day. <laughs> I 
Dragonflies are growing fun. I want more Ed. What yeah, I was gonna say it? that just means that she wants more. That's that's oh, plenty. Yeah. That's plenty. That's plenty. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So Reggie, you're up next. Okay. Okay. Speaking of long days, I came home, took a little nap, and now I can't get my voice back. <clears throat> but that's all right. So. After hearing Ed, Ed like goes like, oh, I learned two songs this week. I'm still working on this one that I was going to play a while ago. But I'm going to go ahead and try it because, you know, I can't wait forever. So this is a Jesse Winchester song. Oh, I hope I remember all the changes. This <laughs> Darling, bet you wonder where I've gone. Oh, don't you worry, I would never do you wrong. Oh, if I'm somewhere seeing somebody new, I'm just down at Club Manhattan. I'm waiting on you. Come on down to Club Manhattan. Have a big black jack on ice. They got this. Got this guitar player and man, she sure plays nice. Close your eyes, she's a young Steve Cropper, and as nineteen. Well, I love you, little darling, but I love love Manhattan, too. The night time is the right time, everybody's having fun, oh, darling. Your home having none. We tell you, sugar. Mm, I tell you what you should do. Come on down to Club Manhattan. We're waiting on you. Come on down to Club Manhattan. Drink a big black jack on ice. They got this, they got this guitar player. And man, she sure plays nice. Close your eyes, she's a young Steve Cropper. And it's nice. I love you, little darling, but I love love Manhattan too. I love love Manhattan too. <sighs> hey, that was excellent. Great song. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's old Jesse. That's a Jesse Winchester song from I think around ninety. I never heard that. Before he died, yeah. It, 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 I think the name of the song, the album, was Club Manhattan. But it's, that was a uh, cool it's song. Got a couple of great songs on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah. So it's a good one. I I didn't mess it up too bad. And 
And of course, you're I'm... the closer tonight, Reggie. Oh, I'm the closer. Oh, damn. Now I no got pressure. No, no pressure. Yeah, really. And then and there and then here I am trying to go back to remember what song, other song I was going to do, and then changed my mind. <clears throat> I think I've done this. I, I, I'm going to do this just because. No, I, I can't do that either. I forgot the words. Okay. <sighs> oh, yeah, you threw me. Okay, yeah, it's all your fault. It's not my fault. I'm going to do it. I'll just close out with the blues thing I've done a billion times. Okay. <clears throat> I can remember that that one either. You say you're hurting, almost lost your mind. That man you're seeing hurts you all the time. When things go wrong, wrong with you. It hurts me too. You love him more when you should love him less. You go behind him and take his mess when things go wrong. Wrong with you, it hurts me too. He loves another woman, and I love you, but you love him, stick to him like glue. When things go wrong, wrong with you, it hurts me too. If he should ever leave you, he better put you down. I won't stand by to see you pushed around. When things go wrong, wrong with you, it hurts me too. Done. Thank you. Thank oh, Reg. You. Well done. The closer. That was a great close. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're all. We're all. Don't just around. let nobody. <laughs> just anybody uh, close, yeah. my brother. Uh, yeah, I, well, I'm honored. Yeah. That was awesome, Reggie. Thank you. That was. Um, yeah. What was the oh. name of that song? I'm. I'm sorry. What was the name of the song? And who that's, did you write that, it? That hurts me too. No, that's uh, Elmore James. That's a. Uh, Elmore. Good old Stan, yeah, blues thing. Um, but <clears throat> um, um, thanks, Art, for asking. Um, I, I am playing as a blues trio at La Hinch on Thursday from 7 to 10, if anybody wants to. Go, Reggie. Yay! Okay, that sounds great, Reggie. Um, and then Ed posted something in the chat where Ed's going to be. We're going to be in. Yeah, yeah, he's got Purcellville, yeah. Purcellville. Purcellville. Yeah. Purcellville one day and then Hyattsville the next. Yeah, all the Vills. This is the Ville turn. That's, that's, that's like a lot of driving. That's that's, be, that's because the uh, Cruella de Vil movie came out. Um, in in Purcellville, about, I looked it up because I had to, about three minutes from where you are playing your gig is a brewery called Adroit Theory. So if you're into craft beer, they make great stuff. 
so, adroit theory. Actually, I, I, I don't drink so that others can drink. That's my motto. Um, because well, if you're I, going to Ed's gig <laughs> and you're into craft beer. <laughs> that's right. Well, it's funny. We, we played a festival not long ago where they gave us all you can drink and, and all you can eat crabs. <laughs> and, and I don't drink, and I'm a vegetarian. So there you go. That, that's the, that's, oh, that's the last joke of the night. They got to rethink that. Oh. Well, that's our show, guys. Thanks so much for another great open mic night live at the Zoom Bar DC. See you next week. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, Thanks, safe Bella. and well. Thanks, Reggie. Thanks, Artemis. Thank you. Thanks, Scott, wherever you are. Good night.